Hello everyone, I'm back again with a three month review of the Galaxy Z Fold 5. I've used this phone um, for the most part since I purchased it. I did use the Pixel 8 Pro for about a week and the Pixel 8 for roughly a week as well with my main SIM cards. Um, other than that, this phone has had my main SIM in it, which I'm gonna put back in the phone today. I wanna talk about my experience over the past few months. I did receive it at launch and I'll start with some of my frustrations and some of the negative and we'll end on a positive note. Overall, it's been a positive experience. Okay, so just to make that clear. I think where my frustrations really lie and I think the first and foremost thing that Samsung needs to do with the next model is to somehow figure out where to insert the S Pen into the device. It's been extremely frustrating to find a case for this phone that actually functionally works in the capacity that the phone is supposed to work in. So some cases, even the OEM cases, you're always giving something up. I think the hinge needs to be protected, whereas before I didn't necessarily think that, but I think that's important that you have some hinge protection, especially given the you know foldy nature of it. And most of the cases that are decent enough to hold the S Pen uh, don't offer hinge protection. If they do offer hinge protection, you're dealing with something overly bulky. Now, if you're working in a construction kind of environment and you're using this phone uh, to like run your you know, contracting business or what have you, then of course you're gonna need that kind of case with any device that you have because you're in a tougher environment where you can cause more damage to a phone. But for the rest of folks who don't necessarily work in that kind of environment, the cases for the most part are really frustrating and they're kind of crappy. So if you get a case that covers the, uh, if you get a case that does not offer hinge protection, you might get the S Pen held either right here, which makes this kind of overlap and makes it difficult to touch the, the fingerprint scanner, or you get the uh, S Pen holder right here, which makes the phone extremely bulky to hold. And then when you open it up, you don't have a flat kind of um, experience with writing. So the point of having the S Pen is to have a writing experience. If the S Pen is right here somewhere on the case, then when you open it up, you, you have a, not a flat experience. If you keep the S Pen right here and you open it up, you can have a flat writing experience, but then you're also giving up the ability um, to protect the hinge. So, and even with the OEM case, it's kind of right here. That case is still somewhat flat, right? It's still somewhat um, bulky. So when you write on it, you're still got a little bit of, of give, right? So it's not... It's not an ideal experience. The S Pen needs to be inserted like on the S23 Ultra. I would even go so far as to say that if you don't have the S Pen inserted, then what's the point of having the writing experience? If this is a productivity device, which ultimately I think is where its functionality lies, then the S Pen needs to be something that's accessible. So that needs to change if you're going to continue with the S Pen as a feature of this phone. Every case, and I've reviewed a ton of them, has been really frustrating. And if you've watched my channel, what I'm back to is actually the super overpriced um, Taurus case, which was $89. And it seems like for the holiday sales here in the U.S. on Amazon, they dropped it $20. So now it's around $40, uh, excuse me, $69, plus you get 5% coupon. So it's brought the price down to still an unreasonable, but much better than $90, um, roughly $70 with the uh, tax and everything. So this one is okay. It's the best one so far in terms of holding the old S Pen, which I prefer, but I still have to keep the S Pen here, right? And you, it has an adapter you can put either S Pen, and then the fingerprint scanner gets, it's hard to, to touch, right? And even when you lay it flat, and I also have a pop socket so that it's actually now, you know, you can hold it better. If you get the cases with the hinge protection, you at least have that to kind of hold on to to hold the phone so it's not overly slippery. Um, these pop sockets, these new versions with MagSafe are actually great. I'll review that another time. But then you can lay it flat and you can have a somewhat flat writing experience. But what have I given up? I've given up hinge protection. It's become more difficult to access the, pan, the uh, fingerprint scanner. And uh, it's kind of oddly bulky right here, right? So all of these things combined, I'm still back in a $100 case basically, right? So if the S Pen was inserted, I would basically get 
a hinge protection case or something that I can like easily take off and you know what has the hinge protection you just peel off the back and then just lay it flat and have a good riding experience or I would just get a case like this without the pin holder right so then I can just take the pin out so that needs to change if Samsung is going to do this um, properly it's time okay the S pin needs to be inserted the case situation is just a pain in the ass so I'm just gonna put it at that now the other thing I guess I've become a little bit um, it's become a little bit cumbersome I would say is probably the uh, the heaviness of it um, it's heavy but it's also slim it's sort of slender so it's kind of a give and take okay but when you have it in your pocket it does feel kind of like a brick especially with a case that holds the S pen so again it's a give and a take right um, it's been a little bit more of a challenge I feel uh, holding it after some time especially when you kind of have an experience where you throw something like the pixel 8 in your pocket and you just don't even feel it right so there's that but it is what it is it's a big case, a big you know device i still prefer it than the 13 pro max that thing was really a brick in my pocket even though this might be technically heavier around the same way it doesn't feel the same because of the slimness when you fold it okay so there's that to be honest with you other than those two things, I'm not really uh, going to, I don't think there are many more complaints about it. The battery life has been consistent. As I said in my prior reviews, all of the things that they needed to improve on, like the improvements were in all the right places. The battery in particular has been very consistent. I consistently get, I would say, probably around seven hours of screen on time for the most part overall. So that's really great for a device that you can open up and you have this big, huge screen to look at. Okay, so I'm very happy with that. Um, I say the battery has been better than the Pixel 8 Pro. The only battery, uh, I guess, devices with better battery life that I've experienced this year are the S23 Ultra and the 15 Pro Max. Now, I had a 13 Pro Max that also got better battery life than this, but the 15 Pro Max and the S23 Ultra are the only two devices that I've owned, okay, that have has better battery life. And this, for as big of a screen it is, that's pretty amazing, right? So there's that. I love the fingerprint scanner. That's one thing that this phone has that a lot of other phones are kind of lacking. You know, oddly enough, the fingerprint scanner on my Pixel 8 works better than on my 8 Pro, but none of them compare to this fingerprint scanner because it's physical, it's not in the screen. And it works like 99.9% .9 of the time. Maybe not that quite, but it's definitely like in 99 percentile. I do not, I rarely get a miss fingerprint, right? Um, so there's that. The build quality is holding up so far. I don't have that kind of crackly sound that I experienced with the um, Z Fold 4. The screen itself has been pretty solid overall. Um, it doesn't have any issues in terms of like it breaking down or anything like this. So that's also a good a good thing, right? Um, build quality, I did get the insurance on it. So I got it at, at launch. So I guess in the US it was like eight bucks a month or what have you. For me, I thought that was kind of worth it. It was kind of okay. Um, you know, I'm okay with that, paying that much money for just the build quality. It's outstanding build quality. So I really, I really like it. I appreciate it. Um, so far, so good. We'll see how it holds up over time. The cameras are solid uh they're not the best uh, they're consistently solid it's good in regular light conditions it suffers in low light it's not the best with motion so again if you have kids and pets this if you're a camera person and the camera is something you really rely on to kind of make your smartphone experience uh you know ideal for you then this is probably not the device to get but having said that, even with children and pets and whatever, you can have a decent camera experience. It's all relative, especially if you consider some of the older phones. It's not a great zoom camera. It kind of starts to falter with zoom, but it's solid enough. So given, you know, the limitations, of, I guess, of the engineering of the device, you know, it is what it is. The cameras, it would be, of course, ideal and nice if it had S23 Ultra cameras. It kind of should, in my opinion especially at the price point, but these cameras are not horrible. They're adequate. They're good enough for most people, I would say. 
Um, so there's that. Um, and as I said, you know, I think the improvements that they made this year are pretty much in all the right places. So who is this phone for? Um, you know, who should, in my opinion, purchase it? I think that productivity, Microsoft Office Suite, if you're somebody who's on the road and need to be productive, if you need to like, say you're surveying, you take some photos, you need to send them off. Um, you're a real estate agent and you take some photos. They don't have to be perfect. Send them off. If you need to have documents signed on the, on the go through, you know, Adobe or what have you, you can use the S Pen. There's a lot of functionality here. I think the productivity, the integration with the Microsoft Office Suite, that if you're a heavy MS Office user, because of the ineptitude and inadequacy of the Surface Duo devices, um, this is the best bet. This is the next best integration you're going to get outside of like a Surface Duo. But those things, you know, who knows what the future is for that brand or that line, right? I think that the note taking is where I'm more frustrated with this because a little bit of it is that I'm not 100% sold that the screen is durable enough for note taking, especially for heavy note taking. A little bit of it is the size. I mean, it's not the biggest canvas, but where I've used it is in kind of like a pinch in a quick meeting. Okay, I forgot my tablet or I didn't have time to grab my tablet. I'm gonna be in a half hour meeting. I just need to take down a few notes, nothing too crazy, nothing heavy, just to jot some things down. But note taking is not a high priority here in terms of the productivity aspect of it. It's not a tablet experience. My S9 Ultra is way better of an experience and that's what I've started to rely on more and more for my note taking needs. This has been kind of like a, an in-between or interim device only if I don't have that available or if I need to do something on the quick. And in that way, the notes are kind of limited or note taking is limited. Maybe the S23 Ultra is not a bad option because the S Pen is in here and then you can just write down something really quick. The only problem with that is that screen is curved. So I hope they fix that. So I think the kind of upsell here is like the S Pen kind of as a, as a functional feature, but there's nowhere to store it. You gotta get a case. The case situation is horrible. The S Pen becomes almost, it gets to the point where you don't even wanna use the S Pen, at least from my perspective. Um, especially if you want it for productivity and note taking, which is what I primarily wanted it for. And I have sat in some meetings and used this for note taking, but it's not the best experience, especially because just the bulkiness of the, the, the cases and you have to kind of you know, figure out how you're gonna lay it flat and it's just, you have to take stuff off. I take off the pop socket in this case. I have to take off the whole back portion on a hinge case. It's just a mess. Even on the OEM case, there's a little bit of a bulk there, a little bit of a dent. So it doesn't lay flat where you can feel like you have a flat writing surface. So that's not, you know, that's not ideal. And so that, again, that needs to be fixed. If you're not, if you're somebody who's big on photos and, you know, then this is, again, this is not the phone for you. But if you're not big on photos, if photography is like a marginal thing for you or something that's just kind of cool to have, but you don't need it completely, then, then go for it. I think this is fine. Um, if you're somebody who just wants a large screen so that you say you work late at night, you're a security guard, you are an ambulance driver, uh, an EMT, you're on call, you have a lot of downtime at work, um, you're a caretaker. So I know someone who has this phone and he you know, watches over an elderly man um, pretty much five days a week and then takes him to his therapy, takes him to his um, even his dialysis. And, you know, there's a lot of downtime here. The gentleman might fall asleep and then he has this to kind of watch. And the battery is good enough for it to last you in a job like that. Uh, especially if you can just get yourself a little battery pack if you need to charge up. But seven hours of screen on time on average is pretty good. And I use this a lot for navigating and it's actually um, still gives me six and a half. So if I do heavy, heavy navigation, I'm still coming in at six and a half seven hours, which for, again, a folding device this big is pretty, pretty dang good. Um, if you're visually impaired, right, and you need the bigger screen for that, I think that that's, this is a great device for you. If you just want a portable tablet, and again, you're not a big photo person, then this is a great tablet for you, right? So, or device. So overall, I think for me personally, 
it's good for what I need it for. I wish that I could rely on the note-taking ability more so than I feel like I can. I think that Samsung needs to put the S Pen in. And as I mentioned in my Pixel 8 video, not so much my 8 Pro video, but the 8 video, I'm kind of in a dilemma as to what I'm going to do in terms of a work phone. Because one of the things that I liked was when you open it up, as I mentioned in that video, you open up the big screen and I can text type and text message I can write fire off emails and I have this big screen to work with. However, given the voice recognition on the pixels, instead of doing this, I can just talk it into the phone and it's as accurate and even faster. So productivity wise, I'm kind of in a point where I'm like, hmm, what is really more productive for me personally? Um, you know, I, it's a tough call at this point and I'm gonna probably stick with this one but I can see the logic. I think somebody mentioned uh, in some of their videos, reviewers, that their work phone is a Google phone. And I can see the logic in that because of the voice recognition and the efficacy of that. Um, so there it is. Anyhow, um, that's my three month review of the Galaxy Z Fold 5. Uh, if I, I'm gonna do another review, it probably will be at the six month period. Is it a yes? Is it a no? I think if you can get this phone, you know, if you're okay with its limitations, you can get this phone on the cheap. If you're not interested in the S Pen, then even better, right? Uh, if you can get this phone relatively cheap, I've seen them as low as like, at least where, where I'm at, $1,100, $1,200 on the secondary market, like in brand new condition. Because some people buy these phones and they think that they're going to like love them and then they ultimately end up not really liking them. So if you're okay with that, then I think that, you know, you, you know this is what you want, then by all means, try to find a phone that is a pretty good deal, um, you know, for you. Now, on the retail side, I've seen them, you know, sell for like $13.99 for the 256 model. I don't know if I've seen $12.99 yet, but obviously Black Friday is coming up, the holiday sales are coming up, so that might be um, something to, to look at. Um, yeah, so again, I wouldn't overpay. You might even be able to get this for like an S23 Ultra straight up, right? Like in the trade. If you, if somebody's like frustrated with this and they want to go back to the other phone and you, you find that person, you know, trustworthy enough, then I think that's not a bad thing or maybe kicking in a hundred bucks or two. Um, that's not such a bad deal if you want this functionality. I don't use Samsung phones for the camera per se, but I know some people love them. Uh, I prefer a Pixel phone or iPhone for the cameras and also for the video camera. So for me, this is more about productivity uh, than anything and having the nice big screen um, for the most part. Uh, but, you know, other people I know have different needs, so it just kind of depends. All right, well, that's it. I hope you're well. I hope your family's well. And uh, take care of yourself. That's my three months with the Galaxy Z Fold 5. I'll see you next time.